So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released iPadOS 15.2 Beta 1 to all developers earlier this week and also to public developers as well. And I've been able to play with it or had the pleasure to play with it for about four to five days now at this point. And we noticed some actual new features and some tangible differences in the OS, which weren't mentioned in the first video. So we're gonna be going over some of those new differences, also talk about how the overall performance has been, any bugs that are persisting. And finally, we gotta talk about battery performance because as you guys know, if you guys have been following the channel, you know that my battery life on the M1 iPad Pro has been pretty atrocious and it's kind of unacceptable. But without further ado, let's get into it. So let's hop right into this video, everybody. The first thing I do like to show you, even with the follow-up videos, is exactly which version I am on. So we are on 15.2 and we're on 19C5026i. And what that I moniker sounds like or what it tells you is that we're probably gonna get anywhere from three to five betas during the 15.2 update until we get that RC edition and the final release. The closer we get down to C, B, A, and then finally the removal of the letter, means we're pretty much there to a public release. But now we spoke about those security updates that Apple implemented in here. So if you go into privacy, go all the way down, check about app privacy report. And what I wanna show you guys is some of the data that's been found while using it over the last week or so, right? So I've been using it for about four to five days. And you can see that every single time I go into any application, it tells you when you've actually went into that application and what it's doing inside of that application from a you know internet IP server perspective. So you can see exactly where you're going, where the actual apps are taking you on the back end, which I love to see. So you can see Microsoft Office is showing 41 times that it's connected to something, which again, that's a lot. And you really don't know what's going on normally when you're just dealing with something on the front end. All the magic happens on the back end, but now we have some insight to know where we're being taken, even though we're inside of an application and what websites and servers we're being taken to. So if you guys wanna try out App Privacy Report, by all means, I really enjoy it. I like having that peace of mind. And the next thing I want to show you is some new features that we actually found out. And shout out to the Twitter community, Ash Tushosh. I think that's how you say it. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it. I'm going to put his Twitter right here. He showed me a couple features, which I actually didn't find until afterwards. But the first one we're actually going to talk about is the multitasking tabs, right? So here, you turn on Microsoft Word, right? Normal application. It works within any application, so it doesn't have to be Microsoft Word. But normally, we have these three dots up here. So you have a couple of ways to access multitasking, right? The very first way, which was from iPadOS 14, was to bring up the dock slowly, you know, grab one of these, move it over, and then you're in the multitasking window. But if we move over, the new way that was actually brought in was with these three dots. And there's two ways to actually function with those three dots. So the first one is actually when you just pull down and swipe down from here, it allows you to bring up any other multitasking window or any other multitasking app, right? So I like that feature because it makes it a little bit quicker, a little bit more intuitive, but then also, Apple wanted to make it as easy as possible for people that were coming in for the first time. So with these three dots, you can actually press on them and get some new options. So the first new thing is that we got some new like glyphs or icons, I don't forget what they're actually called. And you can see that this one in the middle is actually new. And for the first time we get a sub menu. So if we click on this one, we now get the ability to decide which side it's going on. Normally it would decide for you and move it to the left hand side, but now you have the ability to move it to the right hand side if you want. And then again, pick up on another multitasking window. If you want to grab it again, press this middle button, move it to the left, or move it to the right, and switch them over. So those are new glyphs that are happening and a little bit more usability within multitasking. And then also, if you press on here, we now get the app shelf brought down by default. So if you wanna add a new window of a, another Microsoft document or another Microsoft Word doc, you can just continue to press on here and get as many, look at this, as many Word documents as you want in multiple instances of those, and then it goes on a little carousel, just like multitasking. So that's beautiful to see. So that is the new multitasking update, which again, we didn't see before until now. And the next thing that I wanna show you is that Apple gave us a little bit extra customization when it came to the Apple Pencil. So with iPadOS 15, the new implementation of Quick Notes came out. So you can use your finger to pull up Quick Notes, but then also you can use your Apple Pencil to pull up Quick Notes, right? And then normally to the left-hand side, if you have your Apple Pencil, you can do one of these to take a screenshot. Before this new update, you were locked into those two options, right? You, can, you could technically turn them off if you wanted, but you couldn't switch them, you couldn't customize them. And now Apple's giving us that decision. So if you go into settings, go down to your pencil settings. So all the way up here, Apple Pencil, scroll down, you now have the ability to pencil gestures and change exactly what you want. So left corner swipe, now you can decide if you want it to be a screenshot, a quick note or off. So I'm gonna do a little quick note right here. And then down here, I'm gonna do a screenshot. So now it's switched up. So if I go back over here, Quick note should happen over here. Screenshot should happen right there. 
And that's the beautiful thing about Apple. They just throw a little extra customization. I'm just hoping they do a little bit more with this Apple Pencil. Because again, this is a $130, you know, little device, little product that I hope does a little bit more than just, you know, accurately write and handwrite. Okay, and then lastly, what I do want to go over everybody is obviously the battery performance. So if we go back into our settings, let's go into battery, see exactly what we're dealing with. And right here, what I like to do is go into the last 10 days. So again, I've been using the new beta, so 15.2 beta 1. Since it released, I think it was a Monday when it released, or maybe Tuesday. But I like to go on a day like, let's say, Wednesday, right? We used 100% of my battery, and we got about 8 hours and 53 minutes of screen on time. So you can see that the more that I use Apple's native applications, for instance, I can use Notes, 37% took up 2 hours and 20 minutes. So usually, Apple's native applications are a little bit better in terms of battery life overall. So if I continue to go see LumaFusion, 24% took about 2 hours and 25 minutes. And again, with third-party applications, the more intense you are with those applications, the more it drains your battery. So for instance, on this type of LumaFusion day, this is pretty good battery life. This, According to this, I could have probably edited a video for 9 hours, right? But if I go into this day, for instance, LumaFusion 43%, I only did about an hour and 14 of usage in terms of battery life percentage and battery life longevity. And the reason is because on this day with LumaFusion, I was doing a lot more within LumaFusion, right? I had multiple files going in, I had multiple timelines on top of each other, I had different sound effects, I had some calibrations that I needed to do versus on this day, it was pretty much just a one shot day in terms of one timeline, nothing really too crazy was happening, you know, I was fading in and out of some stuff, but again, the more you use something and the more intensely you use it, obviously the more battery it's gonna take up. So on this day, for instance, almost nine hours of battery life, right? Home and lock screen did take up about 10%, about one hour on that, which means that I kind of just had it on in the background, but take away an hour and 10 minutes, you're still dealing with about seven and a half hours of battery life, which I will always take. But then you go on a day like the next day, same amount of battery used, but only five hours and 23 minutes of screen on time because of the way that I was using it. So again, I give Apple a lot of gripe when it comes to the battery life on the iPad Pro because I think that we should be getting that eight to 10 hours of battery life. But again, the more you use it, the more third-party apps you use, the more live streaming, the more data you're using, the faster that battery is gonna drain. But that's gonna do it for this view. Overall, I'm really excited with these new little updates. Anything tangible that comes with these beta updates, I'm all for. Now we're just looking for universal control to come out very, very soon. But let's get out of this view and go to the next view. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. As you saw, we finally got some tangible features like the new split screen, little toggle that's up there, and then also with the Apple Pencil customization. So I know that it's not really much in terms of Apple Pencil customization, but finally Apple's giving us a choice on being able to switch around whether we wanna take a screenshot, take a quick note and things like that. But what I'm more, more excited about is to see what other features they bring with Apple Pencil moving forward because they're just one software update away from increasing the usability and the efficiency of the Apple Pencil and just making it more of just a quick like note-taking device and being able to just switch between eraser and non-eraser. I want a little bit more, especially out of a $130 item, right? But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos on iPadOS. And if you guys watched the last video, please know that we're doing a Microsoft Office series on the iPad Pro and the first video is already out. And the next videos will be coming out probably on a every other day or every third day basis. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike. First link in the description below. And until next time.